What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. Do you have team members who came to you from corporate? They do bring skills and experiences for sure. However, they can also bring along a few things that can be frustrating for you and their peers. So how do you coach people to keep the positive aspects of their corporate experience and then influence them to release what isn't a fit for small business? Well, on today's episode, we're going to have a look at how expectations can cause a lot of disruption in your small business when your former corporate team members expect certain things and your small business simply can't afford it. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a service-based business owner who's wanting to elevate your capabilities to lead your team, you're in the right place. Running a business, casting your vision, and shifting from practitioner to CEO takes courage, structure, and the support of a team, but not just any team. So if you're thinking that because you own a successful business and you've hired people to come and join you, then you really should know how to lead them, stop beating yourself up. And instead, stick with me and stay open to learning how you can improve your leadership skills here every single week. The Stacking Your Team podcast was launched over four years ago as a companion resource to the award-winning Biz Chicks podcast hosted by Natalie Ekdahl, our CEO and founder, who has been sharing her incredible free podcast resource for women entrepreneurs since 2014. Natalie and I both have a big heart for service-based business owners who are juggling life at home, in their community, their industry, and of course, in their business. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at Biz Chicks Inc., where I lean on my 25 plus years of experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation. I'm here to help you build a diverse and agile team of high-performing people who have a passion for winning and a deep desire to transform the lives of the clientele that you serve. So let's get to it with this reminder that our long-standing listeners will certainly recognize. The team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Two things for you today, right before we get going here. One, obviously, I have a cold, and so I sound a little bit nasally. I hope you hang in there with me for this and give me some grace. Secondly, for today's topic, I fully get the irony of this conversation that we're about to have because I was a long-standing former corporate leader who now works in the online space for small business, Biz Chicks Inc., to be exact. So stick with me and I'll show you that I'm listening to our clients and also reflecting on what made it difficult and also what made it easy to make this transition myself when I joined Natalie's team over four years ago. As well, I want to share some recent stats with you that Erica Mandy spoke about recently on her Newsworthy podcast. And if the Newsworthy podcast isn't your daily source of news in 10 minutes or less, it should be. I'm such a fan of Erica and her show. She joined me here on episode 182, where we talked about how a CEO prepares for maternity leave. So if you missed that one, be sure to check it out. This week, Erica shared that in February of this year, that's February 2022, in the U.S., 
4.4 million people quit their jobs. That's almost as many who quit their jobs the previous year in November. Now, from November to February, such a short amount of time. Yikes. The old great resignation is still alive and kicking. She also shared that at the same time in the U.S., there are 11.3 million job openings. Mm -hmm. Many of these jobs are available in the service industry, hospitality, and of course, manufacturing. The fact of the matter is, there are a lot of people available for work who want to do something different from what they have been doing. They also feel justified in making the switch and are looking for work opportunities that check off their list of factors that are important to them. And yes, most often, it's flexibility more than pay that will entice them to join your team. Now, you probably know someone who has quit recently, and I'm betting that some of those people who quit decided corporate life just wasn't working for them any longer. That's what happened to me. I retired early at 52 because my community mentorship and side hustle business was lighting me up way more than my longstanding and lucrative corporate career. So the pandemic had nothing to do with the shift I made, but it's now certainly triggering people to leave. So chances are you've got some corporate people applying for your job postings and you may have hired some already. And as a former corporate employee who joined an online small business while also building my own business, I can tell you that leaving corporate after 25 plus years was a big transition. It's been four years now since I joined BizChicks, closed my own business, released any of my community obligations that I had, and now have 100% focus on my role here. I feel your pain as a business owner who is challenged with former corporate team members who are also going through their transition. So if you missed episode 198 of the Stacking Your Team podcast, it was our fourth anniversary episode where Nally interviews me and gets me to share stories that I've never shared on air. Oh my gosh, the link is in the show notes. So I'm here to help you. So this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to share three expectations that corporate people have of you as they join your team. And I'm also going to share three behaviors that can be quite challenging for you as their leader. And bonus, I'm going to share three outcomes that can make it all worth it. Now, some of you have various degrees of experience working through these situations. It can really depend on how mature the team member is, how desperate they are to have a paradigm shift in how they show up at work and contribute, and what kind of culture they're walking into. Okay? Let's do this. One thing's for certain. People who leave corporate for something different, specifically working within a small business, are doing so because they want a different career experience. They've decided that they want to be more than an employee ID number, more than a name on a large org chart, and they want to know that the work they do is truly being noticed and appreciated. Often people who come from corporate feel like they've been overlooked, taken advantage of, or simply stifled because of all the red tape and the layers of decision makers and the rigidity of what an ideal corporate team player is supposed to look like. So deciding to leave that behind, including the paycheck, the benefits, and the typical stability of a corporate role is a big deal that comes with bright-eyed expectations. Of course, some industries are less stable than others, yet corporate employees can be fairly confident to get another corporate job if they want to. But often, that's not what they want. That's why they're applying for the roles that you've posted within the small business sector, including service-based small business opportunities like the ones you have. They bring skills, experience, and often a deep exposure to terrific training opportunities that they've been given. They also generally know how to be loyal to a brand and a customer base too. So as you onboard your newest former corporate team member, here are three things to factor in 
when setting them and yourself up for success as they join your team. Here's the first one. They expect a stellar onboarding experience. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because that's what they've been provided when they were first hired and again when they move from one role into another or one promotion into another. Corporations invest in training and development for their team members at all levels of the organization. It's a critical part of their retention strategy. So they set aside large budgets to ensure it happens. In your small business, you can offer stellar onboarding experiences too. It's all about thinking like a new hire and planning it in such a way that it's repeatable. In our signature course, Your Next Best Hire, we give you everything you need to plan for and then execute a great onboarding experience for both you and your newest team member. You don't need a big corporate budget or an HR department or a team of trainers. You can do this with the team members you have using our tools, resources, and plans that you're going to find inside the course. So check out the link in the show notes or pop over to the website at bizchicks.com slash next best hire, where you'll see a full rundown of everything included. You also will hear for some clients who received the course complimentary and how differently they now feel about their ability to hire great new people. So here's the second thing you should be considering in order to set yourself and your former corporate team member up for success when they join you. Number two, they expect strategic plans, goals, and measures. It's true. Corporate people are used to being measured. They are also used to having leaders who paint a clear picture of where the business is headed and how everyone will play a part in that. So sharing documentation that outlines their key deliverables helps to knock out the gray areas and keep those results and metrics in black and white. That's why I'm such a fan of the 5-Hour Work Plan, which you've heard me go on and on and on about here at the podcast. And if by chance you're not familiar with this favorite tool, I invite you to zip back, way back into the archives, to episode 34 how to create an accountability action plan for your team. And if you want to hear from a client about the transformation that 5-Hour Work Plans can have for your team, I invite you to listen to episode 154, How to Transform Your Team by Leveraging 5-Hour Work Plans with Leadership Lab member Sabrina Davis. And by the way, everything I'm mentioning here today is linked up for you in the show notes. So here's the third thing you need to consider to set those former corporate team members up for success. Here we go. They expect to be paid well. Now, this one can be tricky because your corporate team members come from a place where large budgets are the norm, especially for pay, perks, benefits, and expense reimbursements. Take it from someone who had a $100,000 limit at American Express card for years. Your corporate team members will need to adjust their thinking about spending Cost comparisons, entry-level pay versus their exit-level pay. And sure, sometimes a small business can afford to pay a comparable salary with some benefits and some reimbursements. However, most of you cannot. So be sure to tell your new hire what you can provide and what you hope to provide over the next two to three years. I was recently on a strategy session with a member of the Leadership Lab, and she told me that at a leadership team meeting... She declared out loud, hey, let's all double our salaries over the next five years. Of course, her team was on board for that, and they were also on board to be more strategic about sales, marketing, and client retention because of it. I just loved hearing her tell that story. And if you missed episode 201, Are You Paying Well or Are You Overpaying?, I invite you to take a listen. It's a deep dive into compensation dilemmas taken directly from conversations that we have inside the Leadership Lab. Okay, next up, here are a few things that you can expect of your former corporate team member that can be a challenge for you in your small business. Here's the first one. They often take longer to complete a task. Mm Mm-hmm. This used to drive my brother nuts. 
I shared an office for a few years after I retired with my younger brother, who was a marketing whiz. Back then, he was building a small team of project managers to provide oversight of clients' projects. He was often frustrated about how long they took to craft a milestone schedule and how long it took to follow through on specific tasks they themselves were providing to the clients. Now, in their defense, they had zero experience working under short timelines with a sense of urgency. After all, they came from the world of projects that could take years to complete, from front-end analysis and forecasting, to revisions, to scope creep, to closeout, and handover. These people wanted to opt out of their hour commute to our nation's capital for work in government or with big brands and instead have the local job experience with the 10-minute commute to the office that overlooked the river. It was a big leap for them. They loved their new lifestyle, but were hanging on to the slow pace and the bloated budgets of corporate work. For my brother, it was a teachable moment that he didn't have the patience for at all. I often intervened, yet ultimately, these folks were not a long-term fit, and they moved on. Here's the second challenge. They often are misaligned on how much things cost. Now, this is a common concern for small business owners who are diligently forecasting spending each quarter and know the value of every dollar and are always keen to stretch a dollar. So when a team member spends money freely and without regard to budgets, it can sting. What we want is our team members to spend money like it was their own and treat property, equipment, tools, stationery, and furniture like it was their own too. Replacement costs need to be factored into spending decisions, and it can help if you educate your team on what operating expenses really are. You know, one of the members of the Leadership Lab regularly shares Amazon spending for the month. Mm Mm-hmm. Black and white numbers from her P&L are shared along with some other key numbers at leadership team meetings. She wants her team to understand how much it costs to keep the doors open and have on hand the proper supplies they need to serve their team and their clientele. It's a real disruption for sure when people see how much is spent a month on cleaning supplies, stationery, gloves, gowns, and kitchenette supplies, and the everyday things you need to run your business. And here's the third thing that can be a real challenge. They often expect frequent raises. Mm -hmm. This stems from the fact that in corporate, there's often a clear pay and progression path forward that new hires are exposed to during their onboarding. An actual map that shows them what criteria needs to be met in order to be considered for a raise or a promotion with a min and a max timelines. You can do this in your small business too. In the Leadership Lab, we are focusing on building out these paths and educating team members that compensation is a separate activity and decision point from performance reviews and a separate celebration moment from years of service anniversaries. So said differently, There is no correlation between your work anniversary date and a raise or receiving a positive performance review followed immediately by a raise. This helps to eliminate any sense of entitlement and instead puts the onus back onto the team member to maintain a high level of performance and contribution throughout the year. Now, I may be jumping onto a soapbox here, But I truly believe that it's time for small business owners to put an end to the entitlement that can be learned in corporate settings and instead create a strong link between consistent contribution and being a candidate for a promotion or a raise when there's a compelling business reason to do so. It's a big shift in thinking for those former corporate team members, and it's panning out to be a big shift for people who belong to academia, or who have recently graduated from school, as they've been told stories about what they can expect for compensation that, unfortunately, does not align with reality of small business. So the clearer you can be about what you have to offer by showing them how they can impact the growth of themselves and the business can lead to very worthwhile work as compared to feeling like a number 
on an ID badge in their former corporate life. And as promised, here are three outcomes that make it all worth it. And I'm sure some of you have experienced these already. Here's the first one. Former corporate team members, well, they're more often open to feedback, maybe even more than you are. For most former corporate team members, receiving frequent feedback is normal. They've also probably had lots of experience having it presented to them in a way that felt like criticism and heavy-handed critique. You can change this. You absolutely want to make it normal to give and get feedback, including for those few individuals who may have been overlooked or even hidden somewhat, and therefore didn't often get feedback until it was too late. So using start, stop, continue feedback framework is the way to go with all of your team members and set the expectation for them to share their feedback with you in the same way because you're open to listen to them, something they may not have experienced before. And here's the second thing about former corporate team members that make it so worth it. They are often keenly interested in the future. This is definitely a motivator for you and your extended team. Corporate team members have been conditioned to focus on the current and then the future state, and then build a bridge between the two. They like knowing the big picture and knowing what the CEO and the leadership team have in store for this quarter, this year, and what can be expected to happen next year. The idea that work that each person does today and how it rolls up and into the mission for the year can be very compelling, especially when you can tell your long-term vision story in such a way that showcases how each person can fit in to the narrative. This is how you will create high retention rates and high referral rates because people who are happy at work, well, they want to work with other people who will appreciate what your workplace has to offer. So they'll invite others to come and join them to be with them too. And here's the third thing about why it is so worth it to hire former corporate team members. Here we go. They're not afraid to work across boundaries. Mm Mm-hmm. Corporate team members have learned this because most often the various departments that formed the company were not all together in one place, nor were the clients or the customers that they were serving. They've had to work with people from other time zones, within other languages, and leverage tech to get the most out of it. They're coming to you with a broad idea of how work gets done, how large the decision chain is, and how long it will take to actually get the work done. All the red tape in the hierarchy is probably a big part of why they left corporate. So leverage their comfortability to work with different people who have different areas of expertise and who look and speak differently from them to your advantage. This is especially helpful if you lead a virtual team or if you have a few members who work remotely. So here's the thing. Former corporate team members can be incredibly valuable to you and your team. The best way to accelerate their impact is to offer them guidance about how to step through the transition from corporate to the small business world of work. They can do it. After all, they want to. That's why they applied for your role. So make it normal for them to talk about how they feel about this transition, the stumbling blocks they've encountered, and set them up with a work buddy, someone who's separate from their direct leader who can help them navigate through this. Simply having a trusted peer who they can ask the dumb questions, count on to tell them that they need to dial back that corporate speak, or pick up the pace, or share the why behind the work processes and the history of how the business grew to what it is today can be so helpful to any new hire, especially a new hire that's walking into a totally different team culture than what they're used to. So what will you do today to apply what you just learned here in the podcast about how to lead former corporate team members? Here's a suggestion. Why not pull out your org chart and take a note of who on your team was a former corporate team member? 
Who seemed to have a little trouble making that transition? Who seemed to have a lot of trouble making that transition? And how many of them are still with you? Then stop and think, how many of them have been promoted or are you planning to promote? And what have your former corporate team members taught you and their peers? And what's been really great about hiring former corporate team members that you would want to rinse and repeat? Now, once you've gathered this data, talk to your leadership team about how you can consider these learnings and how you're going to hire and onboard moving forward. And as I mentioned at the start of today's episode, there are 11.3 million people looking for new work opportunities right now. And many of them will be former corporate people. So why not be prepared to welcome them onto your team with a solid plan to help them discover the many ways in which small business career choices can be a terrific win-win for everyone. So before I let you go, I've got two things to remind you of. First up, If you've ever wanted to join the Leadership Lab, it's soon going to be time to grab your seat. We will welcome new members into the group coaching program for early enrollment in June. So why not get on the waiting list now? You'll find the links in the show notes. And secondly, if you're finding the Stacking Your Team podcast helpful, you'll enjoy my weekly emails that land in your inbox the same morning that a fresh episode airs. In those weekly emails, I share stories and insight that I don't share on air. So why not see what's happening over there too? You can join by clicking the link that's in the show notes. We won't spam you and you can unsubscribe anytime. But I'm betting that you won't want to. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been creating. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Oh, 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 oh